everyone. This is Christy Johnson with Premier Marketing. I'm sorry for the late start. We had some technical difficulties, but we're square now. Um, so we're just going to go right into it, and I'm turning it over to Kevin Fisher. He is the Regional Sales Director of One America. Um, One America, the asset care, it, right now, bar none, is our top um, LTC alternative. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Kevin. Hey, thanks for having me, Chrissy. I appreciate it. And uh, hopefully my technology cooperates uh, more so than uh, what, what we did when we're trying to get this bad boy running. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you for taking time for me. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff I want to go over. Uh, hopefully we can uh, create a, a, a little bit of awareness. And, you know, the most important thing is here, I'm not here to talk about long-term care. I'm not here to talk about a nursing home. I'm here to talk about uh, planning and providing solutions so that we can keep people at home as long as possible when an extended healthcare event occurs. So I'm not going to talk about getting people to a nursing home and funding that. I'm talking about strategies to fund the opportunity for your clients to stay at home for as long as they can from a health and wealth perspective. A couple of foundational things here. Cost of care is an inexpensive. This is a national average. Uh, I want to point out a couple of things. Regardless of using care from a nursing facility or receiving care at home, it's not inexpensive. That home care is for eight hours a day, five days a week. Nursing home care is 24 seven. So should that be calculated out for 24 seven at home for the same heavy duty uh, care that you would experience? Uh, in a nursing facility would run equal, if not more expensively. Now, as I said before, this is a national average, so East Coast, West Coast, North and South combined into that thing. If you are uh, in the Northeast or in California or in Florida, you can expect to have a, a higher cost of care all the way around. A couple of trends we want to keep in mind, the average cost of care in the United States is increasing. Uh, you know, if we look at that average today, it may be manageable. 10 years down the road, it's pretty pretty hefty. 20 years down the road, it almost doubles. Now, I, I read an interesting thing this morning as it relates to the cost of care, uh, specifically toward facilities, in that those numbers have moderated a lot, and, and, and the, the inflation uh, isn't running nearly as, as high as it is for home care. The inflation for home-based care is generally over 4%. Facility-based care is about 2.3%. But think about it. Where do people want to spend their time? Where do people want to be? Where do people not want to be? That's right, in a facility. So the supply-demand, supply for care providers at home has diminished, and that's driven the cost and the inflation trend. So, you know, we want to discuss long-term care, but really, you know, when you bring that up to a client, you hit a firewall. You know, the last thing I want to talk about is long-term care because that's, that's really the, 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 uh, the, the whole problem of, of, of everything being long-term care, a nursing home, the last thing they want to deal with. So, you know, let's, Let's turn that dynamic into something that we're comfortable with. Talk about our healthcare and our healthcare planning. And that's important. That healthcare planning is really relevant because all long-term care starts with healthcare. And that's rooted into our medical system that we know and we have to live with. Think about it. Before anyone can receive care at home from a rehabilitative standpoint or from a long-duration standpoint, they have to start, that's with a doc. It's either an illness, an injury, an illness or an injury that requires care. And beyond that, uh, that recovery, that's where we're looking for extended health care. So everything is rooted in that. So rather than say, hey, let's talk about our long-term care plan, you know, the plan, how we're going to pay for you to be in a nursing home or an assisted living facility. Let's talk about our extended health care plan and how that we how we can build a transition and a funding strategy 
so that you can recover from that malady. You know, that malady may be a broken hip. It may be, uh, you know, uh, anything. It could, it could be a stroke. There's recovery potential there. So extended health care isn't just catastrophic and chronic. It could be shorter duration and recoverable. Long-term care is shorter duration, oftentimes and recoverable. We at One America have come up with this guide. It's called the uh, Step-by-Step Guide to Receiving Long-Term Care. And really, it was intended to be a, uh, a leave-behind piece that talks about planning and, and provides resources uh, for, for a client uh, in the event of an extended health care situation. I actually looked at it and said, you know, some of this stuff in here is good. And from the front-end perspective, this is something we should consider. We should consider talking about this while we're having the conversation, discussing the need and discussing the need to have a plan and provide these resources up front. You get towards the back end, there are some checklists on the back, and it provides a great blueprint to put together at least a high-level plan. Maybe it's not funded, but it's a plan nonetheless. And one thing to think about when I'm talking about plans is we all have a plan. We all have a default plan. It's really called the plan of hope. You hope you don't get sick or hurt, and if you do, you hope that someone's there to take care of you and you have the financial wherewithal to be able to 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 handle. You know that that's our default plan. Everyone's got this, but a plan of decision is really having a documented strategy of how you're going to tackle an extended healthcare event. It could be as minimally impactful as a broken finger, or a leg, or an arm or a hip, or as major impact as something cognitive like Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, or even ALS. So that that whole plan, that plan of decision, how things are going to be executed is vitally important. And you know what? This costs absolutely nothing. It just takes a little bit of time and commitment by you and the client to say we need to put a plan in place. Now, coupled with that is the most important part the style of the plan. And there are really two styles. A funded plan, which is the default. Everybody has this one as well, which means everything you own or will own is available to provide payment for those services that you may need. The other component of the plan is a leverage plan. And really, we're simply taking a deeper look at those monies in the funded plan and saying, hey, what can we leverage? Where can we get the most value for these dollars? And that really involves insurance and transferring some of that risk. And we're spending pennies rather than dollars. And that's what we're going to focus on here. So that was a pretty darn long preamble. It took about eight minutes to get there. But the long and the short of it is, if you need care, how are you going to pay? Think about this. In a present-day scenario, and you can ask this to your client, if this were to happen today, if you were to have a stroke for the sake of argument because they are recoverable. They're far less painful than uh, having to think about the recovery from a a fractured hip or any of that. But if you were to have an extended healthcare event, how would you pay for it? Where would your monies come from to take care of it? Not so much from getting immediate service to solve the problem, but from an ongoing perspective, to recover so you can get back into the business, into business being living. Would those sources come from cash, your qualified money, your non-qualified deferred annuities, maybe insurance money, or would it come from income? Most people start with income. But once you get through that income, what's our backup plan? Where do we liquidate? And here's the important part of it. If this were to happen today, how are we going to solve for that? And this right here is a vital part of your conversation. You'll see why in a minute. A lot of people say, hey, my client's got a lot of money. They can self-insure. Those of you that know me know I have a pretty strong opinion about self-insurance. One, self-insurance does not exist. There needs to be a transfer of risk for insurance to be in place. The accurate terminology is self fund When that scenario, it's dollar for dollar, at a minimum, and potentially greater if you have to borrow money, more importantly, how long will that money last? You know, a lot of people have enough money to last a couple of years. 
But what if something happens for five years or eight years or, or even longer? That eight-year figure is important because that's the average duration of a cognitive impairment. Alzheimer's, on average, regardless of gender, lasts eight years. Two years, maybe we can handle it. Two years, that's the average duration for a male. Five years, that's the two people are requiring care. But you know, the long and the short of it is, you may be able to self-fund, but how long? And the question when you're self-funding is, where do you become uncomfortable? And oftentimes, when you find that comfort or discomfort point, that's when you can start talking about leveraging dollars and putting them, them being your client in a better position. You know, leveraging is important. Asset-based solutions, they allow you to have control and access to your monies. It's a win-win. If you require long-term care, you have access to your money tax-free. If you never utilize it, we pass those monies on. In some cases, tax-free. In other time, cases, maybe taxable. It really depends on the underlying funding solution. But think about this. Leverage is important. We all have this. We all have an asset allocation model. We all have that portfolio. Some are bigger and prettier than others, but we all got it. What we're talking about is just carving out a little piece and making a bigger, better, stronger benefit, which may be able to expend, extend to lifetime. You know, lifetime can be two years. Lifetime can be 30, 40 years. That lifetime is important. But no matter how you slice it, in some way, shape, or form, what we're talking about is turning those those dollars in that portfolio into a guaranteed pool of tax-free money in the event of an extended healthcare situation. It's all about the leverage. So I want to come back to here. You ask that question with that portfolio in mind. You've had an extended healthcare event. How are you going to pay for it? You saw this before. What are your choices? Income. Then what are you going to tap into? But what if I could say I'm going to use this in our leverage model? The only thing that changed is that annual premium replaces income. We can find a funding solution regardless of where that money is located and put it in a better place, in a tax-favored place, for use by your client in the event of an extended healthcare event. It's all about leverage and that's what we have that's what we have in front of you and that's what we're going to talk about we may not touch on all of these but we do have solutions in front of you so let's talk about care solutions and the basic structure of our product our products really originate with a base policy it's either a life insurance policy which is a whole life chassis or a deferred annuity fixed or an index that's it it's the base to that we add a continuation of benefit rider which by definition is internal revenue code, by internal revenue code, is long-term care insurance. Pretty simple. Our base policy and our continuation of benefit rider. Both the base and that continuation benefit are guaranteed. Guaranteed benefits, guaranteed premiums. Takes a lot of the risk out of the equation that you find from the traditional perspective. Add to that, we have flexibility and funding. Let's look at this. We can do a single premium via cash or 1035 exchange. But we can also do a recurring premium if we're using a life insurance chassis for both the base and the continuation of benefit rider. Or with the annuity, we can just do a continuation of benefit rider. Flexible premium. We can do a 10 pay, 20 pay. Paid age 100, so it works like a traditional product. But the most important part, premiums are guaranteed. You don't have to dress like a hockey goalie to meet with your 78-year-old client and say, I need to increase your premiums 33% this year again because your, your carrier needs that increase to keep the block of business solvent. You don't need that. You don't need that. Your client doesn't want that. So why don't we talk about the premium that's guaranteed here? Sure, you may pay a little more, but what you see is what you get. You don't have moving parts. 
Now let's talk about this for a minute. I have a single premium base, single premium continuation of benefit rider. Most asset-based products are sold that way. I have a recurring premium base, recurring premium continuation of benefit rider. That's a new trend. But here's something that we at One America can do. I can do a single premium base with a recurring premium or a recurring premium with a single premium continuation of benefit rider. Now that's pretty cool. I can do what's right for the client. It's not what I want, it's what they want and need. And that's the benefit of what we have at One America. We've been doing this for 30 years. We know what it's like, we know what the opportunities work like, and we know how to build a solution that's unique to your client's need. We're not a cookie cutter solution. Let's talk about funding for a minute. We have a variety of sources and combinations, as you can see. Well, you've already seen. Our COB is treated as long-term care premium, so it can be deductible. It could be funded as an HSA, or it could be funded via 1035 exchange out of a life insurance or an annuity contract. We got flexibility in our solutions. We got a ton of flexibility in our solutions. You know, issue ages. That's something that's unique to us. We'll go up to age 80 with our asset care products, which are our life-based portfolio, or with our annuity one, annuity care one, and index annuity care up to the age of 85. Think about this for a minute. We're not playing in the shallow end of the pool where everyone is running and looking for the young and healthy. We are willing to work in the pool where people actually recognize and need a solution to fund long-term care. We're not afraid of that older age. That's important. You know, another advantage for asset care, it's a joint contract. Joint policy, that's two people on one contract. We're the only one that does it with true unfettered access. Here are our rules. You have to be within 25 years of each other. You both have to be insurable, and you have to have an insurable interest. Pretty simple. A couple of key points as it relates to asset care. Our funding options, I can't tell you enough. Funding options are a huge differentiator. If you know where the money is coming from, we can find a way to make that a source of premium. Two, our benefits. They can be anywhere from two years to an unlimited lifetime pool. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. We offer both individual and joint policies. Joint policies, which we'll talk about in a second, are tremendous tools from a leverage perspective. Premiums are guaranteed. We beat that one up a little bit. Premium for the COB, continuation of benefit rider, may be deductible. That creates some opportunities, both from an individual and a corporate standpoint. If you have those corporate cases where you want to have a company fund a policy, find out what type, what type of structure that company is, LLC, C-Corp, S-Corp. Get that information along with that. Contact the folks at Premier. Let them know, say, hey, we want to have this as a company-funded deal. They're going to ask you a few questions. Well, we'll get together. We'll give our fan sales guys at One America on the horn. We'll come up with a strategy that will work for you. Now, this isn't a group product. This is still an individual, but we can work in a carve-out environment and inside of a top-heavy play. We'll use it as a golden handcuff for an executive benefit. So there's a lot of stuff we can do. We can issue up to the age of 80 with asset care. Remember, with the annuity side, we can go up to age 85. And we can underwrite out to eight tables. Think about this. Eight tables is pretty deep out there. Most of our peers are playing table four or in. If you've got a decline with someone, I challenge you to give it to us and let's see what our underwriters will say. They may be, be a surprise. You may get an offer. And if that's the case, now we have a solution where one didn't exist in the past. Our job is to provide solutions for our clients. So let's talk, look at this scenario. We got Jim and Bonnie, both 65, and they're in decent health. They're not in perfect health, but they're in decent health. And what we're going to do is, is buy a policy, two policies, and accelerate the death benefit at a rate of 2%. And for the sake of, of, of full disclosure, I'm going to show you uh, our asset care product 
compared to our asset care product. I don't want to embarrass our peers who can only offer individual solutions. So what we're going to do is pour in two hundred thousand dollars. It's going to be a hundred for Jim, hundred for Barney. Take a look at this scenario. We're going to provide lifetime benefits. Again, we're the only carrier in the asset-based arena that will offer a lifetime benefit, meaning an unlimited pool. Now, take a look at the monthly benefit here. You know, she gets $3,000. He gets $2,600. Unlimited. That's great. But that's all they get. Here is where the leverage of a joint policy comes into play. If I were to use that same $200,000, I can provide that same lifetime benefit with a higher long-term care benefit for both of them. It's $6,000 for both of them versus $29 for her and $26 for him. Why? One, really, it's a chassis. With a joint policy, we're sitting on a survivorship policy, so the pricing is a little more favorable. That's the, the real secret here. We get lift and leverage out of that. By accelerating at a rate of 2%, we get a modest $5,900 for infinity from both of them. I want to point this out because not all shared policies are created equal. This is a lifetime benefit of $5,948 forever for both of them. It's not splitting the benefit in half. She gets 59, he gets 59. This is the worst thing I can do in terms of benefit. Thing being performance. I got a better solution. If death benefit isn't important and we're solving for long-term care, which is really what we're trying to solve for, check this out. You have $5,900 accelerating at a rate of 2%. That same $200,000 could get me $7,400. Certainly, my death benefit's a little bit lower by about $50,000, but I can produce $7,400 of long-term care benefit for both Jim and Bonnie, never to run out. It's not what's right for me. It's what's right for them. If they want more long-term care benefit, why don't we give it to them? Why do we force them down the hole and say, hey, we're going to give you six years at a rate of four thousand five thousand dollars a year this is what they want we give them what they want so let's look at this in a little bit our lifetime benefit is 40 is uh providing seventy four hundred dollars a month they never utilize it two hundred forty six thousand and change will be paid to whomever they designate now remember here's another way to think about this the least benefit at any point in time that I can receive from this policy, tax-free, is 246000 and change. And here are my funding options, so I'm putting it all together. Our base plus our continuation of benefit rider. If you want a single pay, you have your $200,000. If you want to do it as a paid age 100, you're looking at $13,000. You can crisscross, mix strategies. Why would you do a single premium on the base and maybe 10 pay the continuation of benefit rider? Well, maybe you have a 1035 exchange of only $147,000. You want to do the 10 pay so that you can fill out and have a heavy pool. Or maybe you want to do a single pay if you're a company and you you have a good year and you want to reward that executive and do a 10 pay on the base and single pay the continuation of benefit rider because you don't know if next year is going to be great like this year. You have flexibility in your strat planning strategy. That's what we can do. I show because one, you know you're never going to run out of benefits. Two, we sell 70% of our policies using a lifetime benefit. And three, it's unique to us. It's unique to us in that we are not afraid to say we're solving for the catastrophic long-term scenario, not a controlled short-term duration. 
or moderate term duration of two, four, five, seven years. Certainly we can do that, but we believe in the long game and the value of insurance. So let's talk about non-qualified deferred annuities for a minute. If your client's got a non-qualified deferred annuity comprised of basis and gain, we can convert that gain into tax-free long-term care protection. Pretty simple. All it is is 1035 exchange into annuity care, annuity care two, or index annuity care. Instantly, we get that tax-free long-term care benefit. We'll continue to grow at whatever that credit rate is, but if it's utilized for long-term care, those benefits will be paid tax-free. If we utilize it for anything other than that, it'll be taxed as a traditional distribution from a non-qualified deferred annuity. Now, remember, this is non-qualified money. It's qualified, totally different animal. I can make this bigger and better by adding a continuation of benefit rider. Like I did with asset care, that continuation of benefit rider can be funded out of that 1035 exchange, being a zero cost element, or it could be paid out of pocket. Depends on what you want to do. So let's look at this for a minute. Annuity care is structured simply as a deferred annuity with a continuation of benefit rider. Typically, we fund it via 1035 exchange. Rules for 1035 exchange are a like-for-like -like exchange, being an individual to an individual, or a joint contract to a joint contract. Annuity care is always a single premium base, but may be a single premium continuation or recurring premium. If you do utilize the recurring premium, remember, those, those dollars are guaranteed. Those premiums do not fluctuate. With annuity care, we can issue up to the age of 85. We can add a spouse as an eligible person. This is huge. This is tremendous. So if it's my deferred annuity, mine alone, it's not a joint annuity, my spouse can be added if she is insurable to be eligible to utilize those benefits while living. That's tremendous because typically for my spouse to have access to my annuity, I either have to die and name her as a beneficiary, or I have to take constructive receipt, pay a tax, and then utilize it however I want and pay it off. If in the scenario of a long-term care event, my spouse being named as an eligible person, we can do a tax-free distribution from my annuity to fund her long-term care. Continuation of benefit rider, we can double the pool, or we can create an unlimited lifetime benefit, just like we can do with asset care. Think about this. I can exhaust my annuity, and it can keep on rocking and rolling, generating tax-free income for a long-term care need. That's pretty, pretty impressive. Underwriting, it's no more than a phone interview. If we're not including that continuation of benefit rider, then we're just underwriting off of the, the uh, application. Certainly, you don't get the lift of the free money on the backside for the continuation of benefit pool, but you do get the lift of converting tax deferred accumulation into tax free distributions for long term care. Let's look at an example here of annuity care one. This is our simple deferred annuity. We've been offering this since 1998. Think about this. 20 years we've been offering this thing. Darn, darn long run. So it's starting with Jim, 65, 64, he has 150,000 in non-qualified deferred annuity. For the annuity care one, we have our base and our continuation of benefit rider. Our base offers a 36 month benefit. Our continuation of benefit rider has an option of either another 36 months or lifetime. But to show the maximum impact, I'm electing for a lifetime benefit. Here we're going to do a 1035 exchange from his existing annuity. Why are we doing doing that in moving his annuity? Simply, that annuity of $150,000 was deemed to be not relevant, not relevant to his retirement income plan. If we have an annuity that is targeted and will be utilized for income, that's hands off. But if it's sitting on the sidelines and is intended to be passed on or just hang out there for an emergency, 
I can put that into a better place. Think about it. I can turn those tax deferred accumulations and taxable distributions into tax free money for long term care. And 70% of the people in the country have that intended. That being an extended health care event as a use for their annuity. So let's put them in a better solution. In this scenario, we have $150. Dollars. We're going to split it into two pieces. 133,000 is going to pay for the base policy and fund the base policy, and 16,000 dollars is going to pay single pay the continuation of benefit right. A lot of people are going to say this. Well, that's 16,000 that I don't have earning. Okay, if you want to keep it that way and pay out of pocket, you may do that. Absolutely no problem. Here's something to keep in mind. That 16,000 dollars is transferring in and funding that long-term care benefit tax-free. If I were to utilize that and pull those monies and pay the premium out of that 16,000, one, it would exceed that, and two, it would be a taxable event. Anyway, long and short of it is, we're gonna, have a we're gonna illustrate a crediting rate of 2% for the annuity growth and 3.7 for the long-term care benefit. Here's what we can do. At age 64, year one, day one, policy is issued, year one, day one, we generate an unlimited 46000 per year. You're going to say big deal. Uh, it is a pretty big deal because what's the likelihood of someone requiring care at that age? Still pretty young. Our surrender value is $136,000 at the end of year one. Let's look out and be more reasonable. Let's go down the road 18 years. He's 82 now. Look how this has grown simply at a rate of 3.7% from a long term care perspective. That money has grown pretty well. We have 7,000 a month available, 86,000 a year for forever until he no longer needs care. And if he really wanted to walk away, we had grown at a modest rate. We now have $187,000 to walk away with. Certainly, there'll be a chunk of that that's, that's taxable. But you know what? It's his money. He can do what he wants to do. Here, we simply leverage by moving non-qualified deferred annuities via 1035 exchange into an annuity care one policy. Annuity care two is just as simple. We have a 24-month base and a continuation of benefit rider that can be 36, 72, 108 months. So we add them together. If we do it on a joint basis, the monthly, the base benefit is 30 months. But here's what we can do with simple leverage. Our, our continuation of benefit rider is required, so we got to select it. And we'll be paid out of the base accumulation. Unlike annuity care one, where they're two separate monies, this is one dump and go. And this is pure leverage. So we do a 1035 exchange of $150,000 into, into uh, annuity care two. And we elect what we want to do at it on the app. So if we want to generate a bigger benefit pool, obviously we're going to grab a longer continuation of benefit right. But here's what $150,000 will generate for Jim. Day one, dollar one. And for what duration of time we'll have that? It's purely a leverage story. Simple. Let's look at a joint contract of Jim and Bonnie. As I mentioned, that base is 30 months. We're going to do a 1035 there. We're going to exchange that. And here are our solutions. For 66 months of benefit, we have a pool of 300 odd thousand dollars. That's 5,000 a person. If you want a deeper, bigger pool, under 38 months, it's only $42 a month, a month less. So it's really what duration of time do you think you'll need or want or protect against? And think about this. If we're talking about a portfolio of a million two, let's just say $150,000 is sitting in a deferred annuity that they know they're going to liquidate if it's an extended health care event. A 1035 exchange into this just created instantly a pool of $700,000. You do the math. We went from a million two to a million seven of value. 
you've got some value on the table here. This is pure protection. For every dollar that you protect, that's another dollar you can have earned. Think about it, especially as you get deeper in the age. Now, annuity, index annuity care has been around for a little bit, and this is just our solution for index annuities. What we're trying to do with the index product is to create a better simulation vehicle on the front end, because a lot of folks with index products run at a pretty, pretty aggressive clip. So we benchmark to the S&P and we have some strategies in there. Effectively, what we're trying to do is protect the accumulations inside of the annuity. As with all of our products, we follow the 10-10 rule. We have a nine-year surrender on everything. So with index annuity care, we have our base. We have our continuation of benefit rider. And I want to use an example of someone that's 81 years old. Yeah, we're not going to just talk about those young people in their 70s. Let's talk about someone that's got a little bit of experience under, under their belt. So we have Jenny here. She's $250,000 in a non-qualified deferred annuity, and that's going to be her liquidation strategy if there's an extended health care event. So what we'll do is a 1035 exchange, purely into the base policy. We're not going to do anything other than that. It's just the base policy. What that will buy, day one to all the one, is 10000 a month for 24 months, tax-free, for an extended health care scenario. If we go out a few years, say three years, and, and we have a higher uh, account value, obviously, we'll, we'll provide more tax-free benefits than that. But here's option one, just the base only. Now, remember, this is underwritten only off of the application. There's no phone call, no APS, no paramed, none of that stuff. Application, script check, and a review of the MIB. That's it. We're turning tax deferred growth into tax free distribution for long term care while keeping it in a positive accumulation strategy with, a, with the index. If we want to make it deeper and stronger, we can add a continuation of benefit rise. In this case, we can add a lifetime benefit or double the benefit or triple the benefit, benefit being the, the account value that the base provides. So if I double the, the base benefit, I can make a pool of around a half million dollars, triple it, seven hundred odd thousand dollars. Lifetime, it's unlimited. So let's look at this example a little bit. What we're going to do is pour that two hundred fifty thousand dollars via 1035 exchange into both the base and the COB. Now why would we elect for a lifetime benefit? If she has a history of longevity in her family, or maybe longevity coupled with cognitive decline, it may be a good consideration. But again, this is just an example. It's not an absolute. It's really something to consider. Continuation of benefit, providing double the pool, that's totally suitable as well. It all depends on what's important for your client. And remember what I said before, we're not a cookie cutter. We're not a, everyone gets a six-year benefit period, and that's that, because that's the way we like them. This is what's right for your client. So we pour this 250, and this provides much less than we had before. But we're also adding an unlimited lifetime benefit. And remember, we're going to continue to grow because we're on the index chassis. And we'll add a 2% inflation or more on the COB to continue to let it ratchet up. This is just an example of what we can do with someone that's over 80. It may not be the do-all, end-all, but it represents we can work over 80. We can pr provide tre tremendous leverage with index annuity care, and we can couple it to create an unlimited lifetime stream. That being said, I want to introduce you to my team. My team is comprised, obviously, of me, my internal Justin Fox, and our designated uh, case manager, Ben Schwitz. Ben and Justin keep me running. Uh, odds are, if there's a problem, they come to me. I'm going to ask them for help. Uh, but hey, we're all available to you. Uh, we're all avail available for you. Will not uh, let a situation go without our co without collaborating on it. I did throw a lot of stuff at you, and I have a lot more that I can do. Uh, but at a high level, I want you to understand this. At One America, we've been in the asset-based space for 30 years. We were a mutual company, so we're not running to the to the whims of of our quarterly report. 
our experience is unparalleled in terms of product design. We've got the deepest and broadest portfolio in terms of products. We have the deepest and broadest funding solutions, as well as guaranteed, predictable, and stable solutions from every product that we offer. One last thing, from an underwriting perspective, if we won't insure someone, odds are no one will. I asked one question from you, what are you going to do from your extended healthcare planning strategy? Ask that question. If it were to happen today, how would we pay for it? And then convert that into a strategy to protect not just today, but every today going forward until the end of your relationship with your client. I want to thank you for your time. Hope you have a great day. Thank you, Kevin. It was quite informative. Um, if you, anybody has any questions, feel free to re uh, reach out to myself or Rick Prusha. Our number is 800-365-8208. My extension is 12226, and Rick's is 12227. Thank you.